Hello, Alan again. Uh, we're going through the book of Revelation, uh, trying to get the, the framework of that book uh, so we can get understanding of its message. And uh, we are uh, using that principle of um, understanding the word of God by scripture interpreting scripture. Uh, we're not to have these imaginings of our own, but to search the scriptures and uh, to find what's relevant for that book and the, the true interpretation of it. And so uh, last week we looked at uh, Matthew uh, 24, how Jesus uh, spoke about the prophecy of the end times and he divided it into three sections, didn't he? <clears throat> Remember, the, the, he talked about the birth pains and then he spoke about the trumpet judgments for three and a half years and he spoke about the end times where the bowls of wrath are poured out. They're clearly defined, and so uh, we can see that Revelation, the chronology of Revelation, the happenings on this earth, are in three sections. Uh, and so um, we said that uh, all this, of course, relates to Israel. The church is in heaven. And uh, God is now dealing with Israel to bring them to repentance and to bring them into a knowledge uh, of their Messiah, Jesus. And of course, they do not believe in him now. Uh, but he will come and he will be the saviour of that nation. So... We have this period of two, three and a half years, that is the seven year period, which is called Jacob's Trouble. It's, uh, and it's mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 30. Uh, if you have a Bible, you can read up with me or note the passages down so you can look at them later. But Jeremiah says, uh, Thus says the Lord, I have heard a sound of terror, of dread. There is no peace. Ask now and see if a male can give birth. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth? And why have all faces turned pale? Alas, for that day is great. There is none like it and it is the time of Jacob's distress, but he will be saved from it. These great prophecies of the Old Testament are prophesying what's going to be happening in the end times. And you see that reference to birth there, just as Jesus said, uh, the pain of childbirth. Now, Jeremiah, in his prophecy, talks about childbirth as though people are anticipating something that um, is going to happen, like the birth of a child. And so Jesus said these are the pains of childbirth for that day, that great day. Alas, he says, for that great day, uh, there's none like it. And Jesus, of course, uh, said in his prophecy, that such tribulation has never happened before uh, since the beginning of the world, as it will be in these last seven years. It's Jacob's trouble because Jacob has brought it, Israel has brought it on himself by uh, turning away from God, unbelief of their Messiah, and uh, this period is a seven year period. Well, how do we know it is a seven year period? We're going to have a look at this um, then in Daniel. 
and uh, we realize <coughs> that uh, the most important book of the Old Testament prophecy concerning the end times is Daniel. It's a very important book. And we have mentioned it before uh, about the beginning of Daniel where that Nebuchadnezzar saw that great image and he saw successive kingdoms coming upon this world that have oppressed Israel. And uh, those kingdoms, um, you know, come uh, and successively until a great stone is cut out of the mountain that strikes those toes and the kingdom of God then becomes a huge mountain to fill the whole earth. So we see that the Gentile kingdoms will come to an end and the kingdom of God through the Messiah Jesus will uh, rule over the nations. His name will be the only name. But before that happens, Israel has to go through this time of trouble. And it's a seven year trouble. Uh, if we look in Daniel 9, uh, Daniel is praying for his people. He is interceding in contrition for his people, for their need of forgiveness, for their obstinacy, their idolatry. They're turning away from the laws of God and making their own laws up. And um, uh, because he was praying on behalf of the people, God sent Gabriel, the archangel, to Daniel and gave him this prophecy from verse 24 to 27. A very important prophecy in Daniel it says 70 weeks. Now, the, the term weeks for the Jews just meant a seven, it didn't mean a week of a days, they meant a seven. So, we can say there were 70 sevens. 70 sevens have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So he's saying there are 490 years until this uh, wonderful uh, prophecy of everlasting righteousness coming into the world. 490 years. But he breaks it up into two different periods. Actually, there are three because the last seven years is the third period. But he breaks it up into seven by seven and then a further 62 by seven uh, years. And so the first seven by seven is when the, uh, the uh, city will be uh, completely restored. Uh, it coincided with the last prophet of the Old Testament in Malachi. And, uh, and then a further 62 sevens. So if you add the 62 and the 7 together, you get 69 sevens, which is 483 years. And so he says, that is the time that after the 62 sevens, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end will come with a flood, even to the end, there will be war desolations determined. So he's saying after those 62 plus the seven, 483 years, the Messiah will be cut off. 
that cutting off means that the Jews reject Jesus and speaks of his crucifixion. It says he will have nothing that is nothing concerning that nation because they reject him. Remember, John says he came to his own and his own received him not. His own people received him not. And so because they received him not, the uh, prediction was that their uh, city was going to be destroyed and it was actually destroyed in 70 AD by Titus, the Roman. And uh, the Jews were scattered throughout the earth without a homeland, homeland for uh, 2,000 years nearly 2,000 years anyway, not quite. But uh, we know the end time is getting close because the Jews are now back in their land, as was prophesied. And uh, in 1947, I think it was, or eight, they were, were granted nationhood again. And so uh, we know that things are getting very close to these end times. And so, um, yes, when did this 483 years begin? Well, it says, from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. So that date, the decree was given in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 5, and uh, Nehemiah was a cupbearer before the king, and uh, he was, had a very sad face because he was saddened to, to understand that his uh, city, uh, even though the temple was rebuilt, uh, was defenceless, they had no walls, and it was still in ruins. And so uh, the king said, uh, why, is your, why, is you, uh, why are you sad? And uh, uh, Nehemiah said, why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lie desolate and its gates have been consumed by fire? And the king said to me, what would you request? So I pray to the God of heaven. I said to the king, if it please the king, and if your servant has found favour, before you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. So here we have the, the beginning of that decree that was given to Nehemiah. This is after the Babylonian captivity, and uh, the Persians were now in power. And so... Um, here we have to uh, reckon, that date was reckoned at 445 BC. 445 BC. And uh, we, uh, it's been established uh, to the day after 483 years, 173,880 days, been established for the very day when the Messiah came into Jerusalem. This is quite a remarkable prophecy, and it's in Luke chapter 19 and uh, <clears throat> verse 42. Jesus is approaching the city on the donkey. Uh, he was uh, uh, declaring his messiahship as he came in, as kings rode on donkeys, and the crowds were cheering him, Hosanna to the king of David, uh, and Jesus uh, is the one to fulfill that prophecy of David, that your house, your throne, your kingdom will endure forever. 
and as he approached Jerusalem, he wept over it. Why? Wasn't this a happy occasion? <laughs> he wept over it because he knew it had been rejected by his own people. His own people received him not. And so he said, and this is a very significant verse, if you had only known in this day, even you the things which make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. Can you see that, the emphasis? If you had only known in this day. That day from when that decree was made, 483 years to that day but then he was cut off it says after this he will be cut off and it was very soon after this that Jesus was rejected and crucified and his people rejected him as the Messiah so it's quite a remarkable prophecy isn't it in uh, Daniel and uh, we see the fulfillment of course on this day and so there is a period of a seven year period because the prophecy was 70 by seven and 69 by seven has now been fulfilled. So there's one seven left. So this is where we get the seven year period in Revelation. The seven year period when the 10 nation kingdom is in control in that first three and a half years. And then that uh, Antichrist is in power in that last three and a half years. And um, uh, we see that very clearly, don't we? That the birth pains are the seals, the trumpet judgments are those three and a half years, and the bowls of wrath are those last three and a half years uh, when the Antichrist sets himself up in the temple to be worshipped and uh, the world is under a one world government uh, that he controls and um, this is the time when the bowls of wrath are poured out and so um, when we read Revelation we realize on that um, sixth bowl of wrath is poured out, which is where the war of Armageddon takes place. And uh, Jesus will come and rescue his people, just as the prophecy said in Jeremiah, but they will be saved. Uh, Jesus will come and rescue his people and they will say, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. So um, we're, we're going to have a look a little bit now, now we've established that seven years, have a little look at the scroll, because the scroll is the important part um, and everything issues from that scroll in Revelation. So it's in chapter five, we look up chapter 5. Uh, it says, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. This scroll was written inside and outside, on the back and inside, with seven seals. And uh, he said, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then John says he began to weep greatly. But one of the elders said to him, stop weep weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. 
And so the one who is uh, worthy, he looked like a lamb that had been slain. It was Jesus at the throne of God. And he saw, he saw the lamb standing, you know, before Jesus was seated at the right hand of God. The work had been finished. When you're seated, the work's finished. And now the lamb is seen standing, meaning that he has now work to do. And that work is to bring judgment to this world. And uh, he is able to take that scroll, that book, and to take off the seals. And it's because you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Jesus is worthy to bring judgment because he took the judgment of sin upon himself and he is worthy to take hold and now judge the world who do not accept the judgment that he bore for our sin. And uh, he takes those that scroll and then he takes those uh, breaks those seals so what is this writing this is a book written inside and on the back what's written in this book well let's once again scripture interpret scripture let's go back to Daniel And in chapter 12, we see uh, once again the angel giving revelation to Daniel. And um, he says in verse 4, But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. So we see here, uh, we must be near the end time because knowledge has increased and many will go traveling back and forth. And that's the, the, uh, the picture of our age, isn't it? Uh, knowledge has increased remarkably over the last 10 years, let alone 30 years or even five years, the knowledge is rapidly increasing today. And so he's saying that these, uh, what he has heard from the angel is to be concealed and sealed up. And it also in verse 9 in chapter 12, he said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time. So it's quite clear that the prophecies that were given were to be concealed and sealed. That writing, that these prophecies were written down and were sealed up. And so uh, even when we go back to Isaiah, uh, we see in chapter 8 uh, a similar thing there. Chapter 8, uh, Isaiah uh, wrote these words, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will even look eagerly for him. And so while they're waiting uh, for the Lord, these prophecies are sealed up, bind the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And so when we come into Revelation, then we find that these prophecies uh, on this scroll. Daniel's prophecies, Isaiah's prophecies, and uh, we dare say, don't we, that 
all the prophecies unfulfilled in the Old Testament are sealed up until this end time. And they're sealed up to be fulfilled. We see that Jesus came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And uh, all the scriptures, Jesus said, were written about him. The law, the Psalms, the prophets, the writings, the prophets, the law, all were written about him and he will fulfill it all. And I, I guess uh, we know if we read the Old Testament, there are many more prophecies of the second coming of Jesus than the first coming. It's the climax of history. When this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and righteousness will reign uh, throughout this world. And do we not know what we need it? Do we not pray every day, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? Well, all those who are godly will be praying that prayer. And so, um, yes, um, when we look at this scroll, when the seals are opened in Revelation, uh, they begin to be taken off. And uh, we see in chapter 6, In verse 1, and we'll look at it a bit more uh, next time, but he says, Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and, he, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The first seal that revealed the Antichrist going out to conquer. A white horse imitating that which is good and which is pure, <laughs> but far from it, he had this great motivation of going out to conquer. And of course, uh, from other Daniel's prophecies, we see that he eventually conquers the uh, 10 nation kingdom to become like a president over it. But at the end of that three and a half years, he sets up his own kingdom as sole ruler of this world. Uh, we'll look at perhaps a little bit more about him in the next session, because apart from Jesus, the Antichrist is one of the main players in this book of Revelation. So, uh, yes, uh, on that scroll, the first seal, and when the seventh seal is taken off that scroll, it issues those trumpet judgments. Because it says, uh, who is able to stand for the wrath of the Lamb has come after the seals are taken off. And so, um, yes, the trumpet judgments go through. And then in chapter 10, we find that he had a little book was open. A little book. The scroll had been fulfilled, the prophecies on the outside had been fulfilled. And now, in a, in a way, the, the scroll had diminished because the pro prophecies were no longer uh, in that first three and a half years uh, needed to be fulfilled. So then the last three and a half years, the prophecies were still to be fulfilled. And in verse 11, it says, they said to me, you must prophesy again concerning many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So um, that was the main thought for this session that uh, we looked at the seven years 
and uh, why it is seven years of Jacob's trouble. Uh, trouble that's not only going to come to Jacob, but to the whole world. Uh, we see that in those seven years, it's mainly man's activity that he goes out to conquer. And because of his activity, there are wars and famines and deaths. Uh, and there's great um, signs in the heavens uh, that are preparing for this great seven years of uh, trouble, tribulation, wrath of God. And of course, those last seven years are God's activities. Uh, and he uses angelic uh, instruments to fulfill his will. So um, I hope this is, uh, uh, makes it a bit clearer that we are entering in revelation to the time of the end. You know, the, the sections, we remember the sections that he was to write down what he has seen. He saw the Lord. Uh, the Lord, he said, I once was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. He saw that, and then he sees what is, that is the present time of the church, and then what is to come, what is future after the church is taken up in translation, we call it the rapture, don't we, uh, into heaven, and then these events unfold. There's the climax of history, the consummation of history, when God will rule over this world through the man Christ Jesus, who is God, is a God man. And when he comes, he will destroy all wickedness and all evil, all unrighteousness, and bring that wonderful passage in Daniel, which said he will establish righteousness and justice and peace over this earth, and he will um, put an end to sin. And he will be anointed, the most holy will be anointed, the anointed Davidic king that was promised to David. He will come and there will be peace and blessing on this earth. So we do have hope, don't we? But what hope do we have except through Jesus Christ, our Lord? So next time we'll have a look at a little bit more at the Antichrist, who figures very much in the book of Revelation, and we'll see his eventual demise and how Jesus will come and defeat him and establish that kingdom on this earth. So let's keep praying and long for his appearing. Let's keep praying. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So bless you. I look forward to seeing you another time. Till next time, bye for now.